Chef Pennington here. Today we are doing Instapot ribs using baby back ribs and we're going to do it all within an hour from beginning to finish done. Absolutely amazing. I've been cooking ribs so many different ways my whole entire life. I have never been able to do them for an hour and actually make them where I want to eat them and fall off the bone. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off making a homemade barbecue sauce. You guys can always just grab what you guys like, but it's kind of fun to make your own barbecue sauce because you can really control the flavors, obviously. Um, but this is a really simple and really good recipe. And the link below will have everything you guys need, all the instructions, all the settings for the Instapot, the whole nine yards. I'm going to talk safety, everything. So we're going to get some Liam Perrins in there. So I, I start off with Hunt's ketchup, and I like it because it has no fru high fructose corn syrup. That stuff's just not really good for us. And then I'll put a little brown sugar in there. We've got some Liam Perrins in there, which is Wishes' sauce or Wishes' sauce. And we're going to get some Honey Dijon. You can use any kind of mustard you guys like. And of course, if any of these ingredients you guys don't like, just move them out. But these are big, strong flavors. That's what we want in a barbecue sauce. And here's the secret ingredient, guys, wasabi. Wasabi is so cool. It has heat, but it doesn't stay in your tongue like peppers do. Peppers have capsaicin, which is an oil. It gets in your tongue, and that's why when you eat something hot, it stays hot for so long. But not with wasabi. It's there and gone. It's like horseradish, but Japanese style. Get some hot sauce in there. This is a real preference, real personal. So I like to start out with a minimalistic approach on, on recipes and then taste, season, and adjust. We need some salt because it brings out flavor. We love salt. A little bit of honey, just going to that little extra sweetness, another style of heat. I'm sorry, sweet, which you've got some in the ketchup. We had the brown sugar. It's just balancing out flavors, having three different styles of sweet instead of like one big sweet bomb. <laughs> and the probably most important ingredient was right there, the apple cider vinegar. That little bit of acidity balances out once again. So we get a sweet and tangy barbecue sauce, which is very Texas style. We're not super barbecue saucers, but we do like the sweet and tangy and that little bit of heat, real important. So let's talk about the ribs. I want baby back ribs. I like them. They're a little bit sweeter and, and they're, they're very tender. Um, one thing to look at is how thick your ribs are because all ribs aren't going to be the same size. And we'll talk about in a moment how to adjust your Instapot cooking for that very thing. But overlook your ribs. You want I like a, a meaty rib. I think most people do. You want a little bit of fat on the top. Be sure to, once you pull them out of the pack, rinse them underwater and dry them off. Real important. And we're going to start with some honey. Now, classically, you use some honey or mustard to help your dry rub, your seasoning stick. Um, for me, I don't like the mustard. I think it does affect the flavor. Some people think this doesn't do anything to the flavor. I would strongly disagree with them. Um, but for me, it's honey. If it's mustard for you, go for it. But those are the two really mainstream popular ones there. And we're going to start doing some dry rub. Now, I've got an offer for you guys. If you guys, I'm going to have a link below for my newsletter. If you guys subscribe, the next newsletter I put out, I'm actually going to give away my real dry rub recipe, something I've never done. And I swore I'd never do, but I had the idea. You guys that are my followers and those that are hanging out, I'm going to hook you guys up because it's a really good one. It's taken me probably 25 years to build it. So if you guys sent my newsletter, you're going to be getting it in the next one. So what we're going to do here is we're going to get a good amount of the dry rub in there. And then we're going to allow the ribs to sit out for, I'd say, a minimum of 10 minutes. And you don't have to put them in the refrigerator, but you can if you like. Um, what that's going to do is allow the seasoning to actually get into the meat because we're going to put in the Instapot. Instapot's going to have liquid in it. So this is our chance to cure the meat, you might say. It's going to get that seasoning in there. So don't skip that, please. All right, our settings and our seasoning. Let's get our Instapot ready. Super awesome ingredient. Apple juice and apple and pork are really good friends. So it makes good sense. So we're going to put high, uh, concentrated orange juice in there. That's one tablespoon of the dry rub, exactly the same. And then we're going to place those in there and curl them around. If you guys did want to do that, you could cut the ribs in half. A um, little bit easier maybe for some whenever the ribs are cooked. This is going to be eight cups of water. 
pretty much what we're doing is put enough water to almost cover the ribs. I've tried this before with less water and it turns out better with the more water. It's just a more moist cooking process. So secure your lid. Very important. Make sure that this is on the ceiling side. There's only two. There's venting and then there's ceiling. And then our settings. We're going to do meat and stew, which is a pressure cooker setting. And you'll see right there it's on high pressure. We're on normal pressure. There's three different pressure settings. And then we're going to set our time. Since these are thicker ribs, I'm going with 45 minutes. If you had like really skinny ribs, you could probably get closer to 35 minutes. So the timing is depending on how thick your ribs are. So when it's done, you'll see that it'll count down and then it's going to show you this L00. That's after it's done. Sometimes when you cook the product in the Instapot, you don't want to just release the pressure instantly. Sometimes you want to let it sit in the heat a little bit and that's what that timer does. So you can be very precise with your recipe. That's important right there. That's what we're looking for, that little vent to drop down. That means the pressure inside of the pressure cooker is safe to open. Once that drops, you're good. That's it. That's the big scare factor. We know that dropped. We're off to the races. So we've got some ribs here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it to the sink and get rid of all of the liquid. And then we're going to put it back in the Instapot. We're going to let it hang out for just a moment. We're going to let it cool down just a little bit before we start handling it. So what I've got next to us there is a cookie sheet with a roasting rack. What we're going to do is we're going to pour our ribs out here. We're going to put them back in shape. We're going to put some barbecue sauce on them. <clears throat> and what's nice here is these ribs are hot, but they're not as hot as they would have been if we had just taken them out of the Instapot from the cooking. So go ahead and put them back together. These are definitely fall off the bone, which is really cool. So we'll get them back into shape. You could right now put some of the barbecue sauce on the underside if you like. I elected like not to, and they still turn out wonderful. It's just a personal preference there. So voila. And our homemade barbecue sauce. Pretty much the, the ribs are really hot right now, and they really want to suck in something. And this is a perfect time for the barbecue sauce. It's because we got major flavor going on here. So we've got that. I think this is an important ingredient, some fresh cracked black pepper. It offers a little extra texture on the outside of the ribs, and it's very traditional in barbecue, getting that you know, thick coat of pepper. And we don't have to go thick here, um, but whatever you guys like, or just don't do it if you don't want it. And we're going to go into the oven under the broiler. It's about three to five minutes. It depends on how your oven is set up. I suggest making sure that the upper rack isn't too close to the broiler. And look what we got, guys. We did this in our oven, in our house with an Instapot, a device that costs under $100 and can do a zillion things under an hour, guys. Like, talk about coming home from work and just throwing some stuff in the Instapot. So cool. I'm so excited. Definitely fall off the bone under an hour. So here's the here's the extra part here. I've got uh, a sales website. So I've got a link here I'm going to put below for an Instapot. You guys can...